Hello, welcome back to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all of our favorite horror movies. I am not James A. Janice, and today we're going to be looking at 1980's Cannibal Holocaust, directed by Ruggero Diodato. It is the first ever instance of a found footage horror movie coming out, you know, way back in 1980, well before the Blair Witch craze started it all out. And Cannibal Holocaust. Okay, I wanted to make this kill count because I knew James would never. I respect that. I thought that this was just a measly banned movie with animal violence in it. No way it could be that bad. Do not watch this movie. It is one of the most grotesque movies I have ever seen. It is genuinely disturbing what happens in this movie. Do not watch it. It is banned in over 50 countries for a reason. Fun fact, it spawned six sequels, has every single animal in it actually murdered. There is no fake animals in this movie. The director was arrested in Italy after the production of this movie because they thought it was a real snuff film. I don't really want to waste any more time. Let's just get into it. The movie opens on a reporter talking about how despite the advancements of man, there are still tribes out there that live in the Stone Age and that four young and fearless Americans are going to go out and document these tribes. These include director Alan Yates, Faye Daniels, his girlfriend and scriptwriter, and his two friends and cameramen, Jack Anders and Mark Tommaso. The film transfers to footage of the crew talking about how unafraid they are and that this is totally going to be their last movie before retirement. The, the reporter then reveals that the last two expeditions to go on this trip did not come back, were never found, and that it's the same case for these people. All right, it's been four months since we last heard of them, so a New York University is going to fund an expedition to go look for them. We then quickly cut to a group of tribal men, later confirmed to be called the Yakuma, eating a random corpse. It is said that they didn't kill him, but I won't count the corpse anyway because it's off screen. We get our first death when a group of military men sneak up on one of the Yakuma and shoot him at seven minutes in. At 7.10, a tribal man shoots a poison arrow into the shoulder of one of the soldiers, and he is later seen killed, so we'll count him right now, uh, but he, he's killed on later on. At 7.16, the killer is then shot to death. At 7.49, another tribesman is shot and killed. Another is shot at 8.15. The soldiers and the New York anthropologist find a lighter on one of the tribesmen belonging to Faye Daniels, again, the girlfriend of the director of the documentary. Um, having captured the surviving tribe's Yakuma, they use him as a guide to go through the jungle. After stumbling around for a little bit, the uh, native of the group finds the corpse of Philippe Acaño, which was the guide for the four documentarians for the jungle. I won't count him because I'll count him later on. He does die on the script, so spoiler alert, they do find his corpse right now. So, The guide for our New York professor friend, which is basically the main character for the movie, named Chaco, gives the Yakuma uh, some cocaine. And he takes some too, because apparently that'll make the tribesman happy and he won't run away. They then feed the Yakuma some muskrat stomach, which we get to see the actual corpse, and disemboweled body of this poor little animal and get to see him eat the actual stomach, so that's fun. We then watch a Yakuma man punish a woman for adultery by assaulting her with a rock and some mud and then beating her to death at 2219 while Chaco and the others watch. Uh, they then follow the soldier back home when Miguel, the soldier for the group, strips down naked and has darts blown at his feet. And apparently, since he didn't get scared, it's all cool. They get to go back to the Kuma village. The group follow the Kuma to their village and return the prisoner that they have so they can speak. They see a girl wearing a film canister belonging to the crew. They don't say nothing. They don't freak out. Then they see a freaking and tweaking Yakuma man screaming and hollering and he wails and shows them bones and burnt huts. We only see two bodies here. I want to I want to say that. We'll see them later on. But I only see two bodies here. We see a Yakuma man with a giant bullet wound in his leg, comes back later. Miguel just gives him a switchblade, he's like, take it. 
and you know, they're fine. So all sins are forgiven. We then see two cannibal tribes, the tree people and the swamp people, uh, fighting each other. The swamp people smoke a tree person out of a tree and he falls and cracks his head open and dies at 3155. And he's then whacked a few times for good measure. A, another tree person is shown disemboweled at the swamp person camp, but I won't count it because he's dead. Chaco shoots and kills a swamp person at 3330, followed by the professor shooting one and then Chaco shooting another because that's, that's three kills. After saving a group of tree people from the swamp people, which they just did, the group is allowed to go back to their camp and watch a nice warrior execution via mutilation. Not sure why they would want to do that, but I guess they were too freaked out to like say, I'm good. The professor gets a nice wristwatch uh, before the shaman of the group goes back to screaming and hollering and whatever. We never see the warrior executed. We see the body later on, but since we never see him alive, I'm not counting it. I guess they ran out of budget or something. The professor strips naked and goes to take a bath, which incites a woman, a gaggle of tree women to come out of the woodwork and start pushing them over. When he starts pushing them back, they freak out and run out of the water and go to a site which they cry and cry and it's then revealed that four American dressed bodies are strung up in a big thing of bones. The professor goes back to the Yakuma camp, determined to get the film canisters from them. So he takes his recorder and plays a nice little chant. And they're like, holy crap, dude, take whatever. If you want to have some lunch, they're invited to dinner. The warrior shown later, um, shown earlier, is brought down and they eat him. And the professor is made to have a nice hearty bite of liver, which is fantastic. The professor goes back home with the film canisters, gets a nice interview on MTV, and he's like, yeah, I guess we can show this on live television. TV execs really want to do it, all right? They're in a big boardroom, and they're like, this is going to be the best documentary ever. I don't know why I'm saying that so weird. I just can't say it right. I'm sorry. And he's like, well, shouldn't we review this first? And they're like, ah, um, how about you watch this last documentary that the crew made? called The Last Road to Hell. In it, we can see eight African, I'm assuming African men, be executed by firing squad at 4323. A child is shot at 4411, and then two more men are executed at 4436. It's then revealed by the main TV lady that uh, Alan and his group actually paid for this to happen. They organized the executions, so those were real deaths. They just paid the soldiers to like, gather up some random people and kill them. The professor is still like, yeah, I would love to see that documentary actually. And so after 45 minutes of walking through the jungle, we finally get to see the found footage segment. We are reintroduced to Alan Faye, Mark and Tina and their guide Philippe, of course, the most important character in this movie. Get to see some needless nudity and them just wandering around talking before it then cuts to the professor interviewing some family members of the group, including Alan's dad, who says that he's a cruel, paranoid, blood-lasting psychopath. Uh, Faye's sister that revealed her real name is Tina, but she wanted to be an actress. Another of Jack's wife saying that he was good in bed and that uh, sucks he died and that, you know, you think she can make some bread out of this. And then Mark's dad saying that he's a no good SOB, which we find out to be miraculously true. We return to the footage showing the crew hiking, laughing, and collecting bugs after six days. The crew beheads a real living turtle for like five minutes and spends so much time dissecting it and then eating it. Faye, Tina, throws up. I almost did too, I'm not gonna lie. It was really nasty. We actually see this turtle earlier and the professor and the uh, guy just think that it's like from the Yakuma people, but it's not. Wow. Faye screams about a spider and so they kill it with a machete. They kill a real spider, but that's not as bad because when Felipe puts his boot back on, he's bitten in the leg by a snake, which they then promptly kill. That's like four animal deaths at this point. I couldn't find the species of the snake, but it is most definitely venomous. So Felipe uh, is screaming and hollering. Jack tries to cut the venom out, I guess, but Alan is like, screw it, let's cut off his leg. And so they wrap up the belt around his leg and start hacking at it. 
This, of course, kills him because they did it way too soon for it to be effective. They just wanted to cut off someone's leg for the movie. And so they're like, ah, oh, dang, we had to do it. Rat. Felipe's dead now. Oh, well. And we get to have Felipe on the count. 59-38, who is either poisoned or dies by having his leg cut off. Probably poisoned, I will say that. Faye seems the only one bothered by it, but uh, that doesn't last long. Trust me, Faye is just as guilty as the rest of them. And we get to see them bury uh, Felipe, who is then later unearthed because they buried him under a bunch of leaves. We then have uh, Jack and Alan talking about how rich and famous this is going to get them. This is going to be so nice. And Jack's like, yeah, I'll be able to cheat on my wife real nice with this. We then see them stumble upon a Yakuma group in the jungle. They kill two poor monkeys. They cut one's face right off and have some poor kid eat the actual monkey's face. It is so disgusting. Jack after seeing this, uh, just decides, ah, we'll never catch up with these people in the jungle, we'll never find their village, so he shoots one right in the leg, which we see later on, that's called foreshadowing people, and they follow this guy all the way back to the Yakuma village, which is visited by the professor in the group later. The professor is like, what the heck, that's horrible, and the technician running the film is like, yeah, well, actually it's not actually that bad, actually. It gets a lot worse. The group then goes around, kicks a bunch of people, finds the person with the shot leg, and they're like, who could have done these? The savages, he's gonna die now. And they go over to a pig and they just start kicking it. And then he shoots it so that people can't eat it. And then he's like, I've got a great idea. Alan, Jack, and Mark all shoot while Faye films, and they round everyone up into a hut and then set it on fire and they're like forcing everyone to stand there. They're laughing, they're cheering, while these poor Yakuma people are burnt alive. I will say, the internet says that 22 people uh, are killed in this. I don't think so. I only saw two corpses later on. So I'm only counting two Yakuma ungendered people burnt alive at one hour, seven minutes, and 56 seconds. Alan, and Faye proceed to make out and have sex in front of the escapees of the burning hut. Just there. They're just there having sex. That's, it's horrible. We cut to a scene of the professor and the TV executive lady talking and he's like, the TV executive lady's like, this is fantastic. I cannot wait to film this. This is going to be juicy. And the professor's like, actually, um, I don't know about that. This is actually kind of gross. And she's like, huh, maybe. We then cut back to some more found footage of Faye saying, we've managed to arrange diplomatic relations with the Yakuma people. The crew is then revealed to be hanging around a very, very wounded old woman Yakuma, who they say just wandered off into the woods to die like a cat. I don't know if that's real. She is seen covered in welts and bugs and like her skin's melting off. It's really nasty. But I'm just going to assume that they did that to her. But she does not die on camera, so she does not go on the count. The crew then stumbles across this pregnant lady like this while the Yakuma women just force her to have a miscarriage, I guess. They reach up inside of her pull the fetus out, and then bury it. So I'll put the fetus on the kill count, because, you know, that might be uh, controversial, but whatever. At an hour and 15 minutes and 17 seconds, we get a fetus buried in the mud, and then the Yakuma women beat the miscarried woman to death, I assume, because there's a lot of blood in the scene, which usually means death in this movie, at one hour, 15 minutes, and 28 seconds. The Alan then talks about the Yadamoto, which is the tree people, and the swamp people again, showing a shrunken head of a swamp person, saying that these are savages. <laughs> it's a gross. Back in New York, the professor tells the TV executives that the footage is horrible, but the TV woman is like, actually, this is the best thing of all time. I can't wait to air this. The professor says, you actually haven't seen the whole movie, you dumb woman. How about we go watch that? And so all the TV executives and the professor go into a room and have John the Projectionist, does come up later, uh, play the movie. It cuts back to the group finding a young tree woman 
proceeding to assault her. For about 10 minutes, they take turns assaulting this young girl while Faith screams to stop, not because she feels bad for the girl, but because she's worried about wasting film. It is genuinely horrifying because the girl, I can't tell if she's underage, but she certainly looks like that. Obviously, they didn't really do that, but it is disgusting. This was genuine. I almost threw up at this part. I had to skip it, honestly. It was horrifying. Then we see a young staked girl like that, except a lot, lot worse at an hour, 23 minutes. <laughs> Oh wait, no, I didn't actually write down the time. Lot like that at like an hour, 21 minutes and 31 seconds. This is of course the woman they just assaulted, which means they assaulted her three times and then impaled her on a spike all the way through. I don't even know if I can show this, but I'll try, I guess. Finally, the Anamono charge the group, causing them to run when a spear is thrown. However, Alan does manage to shoot a woman at an hour 23 minutes and 6 seconds. Jack is seen struck with a spear, and so Alan's like, ah, he's done for while Faye screams, you can't, you can't. Too bad. Alan shoots Jack off screen at an hour 23 minutes and 58 seconds. We then see his nasty corpse getting castrated while Mark promises to keep filming to the last foot. Mark shoots a running Yanomono at an hour, 24 minutes and 30 seconds. The tribe circles back and we can see that Jack is now decapitated, torn apart and eaten. The crew is now fleeing, lost with no weapons. Alan uses a flare to scare them, but Faye is caught. Alan makes Alan, Mark makes Alan not chase Faye because that would probably get him killed. We then see Alan and Mark film Faye as she is stripped, assaulted, beaten, and ultimately decapitated at an hour, 31 minutes, and 55 seconds. Mark is found beaten to death at an hour, 32 minutes, and 28 seconds, while Alan is screen killed off screen. The movie ends with the professor wondering who the real cannibals are. As the footage is pronounced burn, just kidding. The reason we got this is because John, the projectionist, sold it for $250,000. All right, let's get to the numbers. I counted 33 deaths in this movie. Uh, I don't remember the breakdown. I'll put it up right here. And the kills on average right here. Golden Chainsaw for the coolest kill. I'll probably give to the staked girl because man, is it graphic. It is nasty. It is very, very memorable. I feel horrible for her. Still a memorable thing, all right? Lame is kill. I'm gonna have to give to Alan. Even though it is, you know, he does get a lot of blood and guts. Shot off screen? Are you kidding me? And if you're not comfortable with that, give it to one of the y Yakuma that died off screen. And that's it. Cannibal Holocaust came out in 1930. 1980 and it was is really bad do not watch it do not watch it i did this so you did not have to watch it do not watch it and that's it um write down in the comments below the next kill count you'd like to see top comment wins anything that uh dead meat won't do i'll probably do but i'm not gonna like it love you never again I hate this movie!